this video we're going to do a quick sketch a bit of ink and then we're going to use some gouache so we're going to do a landscape sketch and then we're going to take that landscape sketch and we're going to turn it into a painting and i'm actually just going to use a ballpoint pen to sketch out my picture so um i don't normally draw at this angle but let's see what happens so what we'll do then is we'll put a tree over here So we're just um, sketching a tree, not uh, too much detail. We're going to come over with gouache. Gouache is pretty opaque, so all of this will be um, covered with the, the gouache, and there might be some lines that'll still come through. So here we go with the drawing. And we do want to give some uh, some structure to the tree. So let's just uh, leave that one at that. And then we'll have some rocks. We'll have uh, some grass here. It's quite difficult to draw at this angle. And we'll just... Uh, so I don't recommend drawing, uh, actually easier to draw if it's flat. Um, let me change the way that I hold the pen. So I'm going to hold the pen more like a brush. And then, uh, and then over here what we'll do is we'll have a, a decrepit fence. And that will just extend down into the valley. And on this side, we'll just build it up with a bit of a landscape. Um, here we'll have a few more rocks, some grass, a bit of a pathway that winds between. And then what we'll do in the background is we'll just have this um, idea of something. And then over here we'll have some... Right, so there's our uh, sketch, a pretty basic composition in terms of what we're trying to achieve. And now what we'll do is we'll start getting stuck into the actual painting. So the first thing that I'm going to focus on is just going to be the sky. And I'm really just looking for something nice and light. And we're just going to block that in. So let's have a look and see. I'm, I'm I'm using uh, gouache. Uh, this is cerulean blue. And it came out a little bit green. And then here I've got some white. So let's see how we do. So I'm just going to take a pretty uh, larger brush for the sky. Nothing too big though, so just gonna get that tracking here now. Right, so uh, this is a very nice paper actually, and the paint just glides on. In, in some of the previous videos, I was using. Uh, what you would call a recycled paper and uh, uh, very absorbent and it really was uh, quite challenging to to paint on the surface because the paper would also break up so uh, it wasn't too much fun uh, but this is a lot um, easier and you can see we can get some nice uh, textures in the sky there so we'll just keep uh, going with those. Right. And now we can even create some uh, texture with the clouds. And because this is such nice paper, uh, yeah, we, it's not that difficult to you know to create 
interesting uh, shapes um, that could well just be clouds and then maybe in the distance using um, a more of a horizontal stroke we can just uh, lighten it up and then just create a little bit of depth uh, a bit wider and then as you come forward there's more uh, definition and you'll see I'm not applying it with any uh, particular motive I'm just applying so Right, so there we just have our sky blocked in. So we're going to work pretty quickly. So I'm not going to spend all that much time perfecting everything as we go. But um, yeah, we'll just see how we go as we go. So that's the first uh, step done. Okay, just had a plug in the camera a bit there. So you may have noticed a slight change in the camera angle. Um, let's move on then to the next thing. The next thing we're going to do is just block out some background here and just to indicate some kind of something happening in the background and for that I want to use French ultramarine and a bit of crimson and a bit of white and that then just creates some interesting depth and of course that color then pushes back the, the landscape a bit. So just a little bit of um, uh, some white mixed in with that. So let's add a bit of white. Okay, so I'm actually not even cleaning my brush of the blue that I had before. I'm gonna keep that on. And just mix it all up together and, and I want something relatively light I don't want anything too bold so yeah that's uh, that could be interesting I'm gonna go a little bit whiter than that that's uh, a bit dark but you can see with the smooth paper we're able to create all kinds of um, interesting shapes now bear in mind that the further something is away from you the flatter the shape is so if we really want this to push back quite far we would have to make that shape pretty flat and uniform maybe a few uh, pieces of interest but we do want it to push back a bit so I'm going to do that now and we'll have the light coming from the left so I'm just going to add the highlight then on the left hand side and across the top of some of the items and that'll just um, create that impression that the light is coming from that side and then on the right here we have a pretty steep section so yeah, so there you can already see we've got this like mountain here, the lights and the darks, and it's all kind of working quite uh, nicely together. And then the next thing uh, I need to do here, just clean the brush a bit, and I just want to add in uh, the piece that comes in behind there. And because it's on the shaded side, I am going to just... Uh, Add a little bit of uh, a little bit darker. Oops, uh, but don't worry if you um, go out of sorts because um, it is gouache, it is opaque, you can layer. So we just uh, we just go over and we create the shape that we want. Okay, so. So we've just uh, got something like that going on and then um, in this foreground we're going to introduce a bit of green because this is now coming a little bit closer so we want to give it some color but um, we still want to you know leave it a little bit undefined so 
just opening a tube of paint here. Right. And uh, we're not going to go terribly light. We'll keep it. We'll still keep it a bit dark. So you'll see now when I apply, um, it will be a kind of a darkish green, and that's using uh, crimson and the ultramarine. And we're just going to uh, do something like that. So we're just blocking in color at the moment. So there we go. All right, so we, we've gone over the tree, everything that we're going to do, but that's fine because we'll be able to come back and start working on that area now. And when we start working on it, of course, that'll all change. So um, just going with a kind of a slightly redder green and just let the paint do the work and um, don't try and uh, create all the areas of interest yourself you'll see if you don't try too hard you can actually get the paint to do some of the work for you in creating some interesting spaces so I'm gonna add a bit of a highlight to some of those areas so the light coming in so just a bit of white that we've added but not um, white white so just some lighter but a kind of a, a, a flattish um, color on the hills because of course they are quite far away and um, we just you know want to maintain a little bit of interest there so that's what we're doing and uh, then we want to look like it's kissed by the sun so we do want to give it a, some of a, the lighter yellow right, so And you'll see I'm, I'm just roughly going through and then what we're going to do is um, do some really yellow bits and then some much greener pieces. Right, you'll see a bit of the blue there that I've used to mix up so French ultramarine or ultramarine and the and the yellow this looks like a lemon yellow and so on the back end we just uh, and don't be shy you know to make it uh, quite a bit darker if you want to show some shadow so all right, so there we go. We've just got this blocked in space of of green, and we have this nice, interesting kind of hill effect that's growing here. And you'll see that as you layer and you go deeper into the color, you'll see that the interesting areas keep popping up. And I'm all for those um, accidents of color that create these interesting spaces. And then uh, what we can do, uh, you know, you don't want to make it too, too green, maybe. Then we do mix in a little bit of uh, crimson and we just uh, create another color and we mix that in. And then as you start putting down the layers, you'll see your hills become more interesting. And you can, of course, then start to create your own... Um, areas of interest so at the moment though we're just going to block that in like that okay now with that done what we're going to do now is just focus on some of the foreground so one of the things we need to do is put in a tree but I'm going to wait for this green to finish so while that's finished I'm actually going to focus 
uh, more in the foreground here and so we're going to look more at uh, this area so we've got some rocks uh, rock there and a rock there and then we had a pathway coming through there right so let's do a bit of that and then what we can also do is focus a bit on the uh, bit of green in the front here and of course we want to pull that forward when compared to the green in the background so to do that I've got some um, vermilion, vermilion red here and I'm just going to use that then for the front so we've got the crimson in the middle and then we're going to do the vermilion which is a much brighter red for the front right and that'll just give us a slightly different green so now we're going to mix all that up so uh, let's do that so you'll see the vermilion knob that's been added to the yellow ochre and we get this um, reddish texture here and that's great because uh, using the warm colors to pull forward so that's what we've done here and we'll do a little bit more on this side and we'll just see um, how that's going to look with a bit of a highlight of course we'll have to have um, more highlighted areas spaces um, so you can already see how we can just buy a few um, highlighted dabs you can already start creating those interesting spaces right so now what we want to do is is have a look at some uh, grass here in the foreground so I'm going to take some of the blue in the sky and mix that in with the red and let's see what we got so we, we're getting this um quite a turquoisey kind of grass and you'll see for the grass i'm i'm, I'm actually just um, mixing it up quite a lot i'm not really trying to create um, blades of grass i'm just trying to create the impression of grass now in the background you'll see that the colors were fairly flat and now in the foreground here, we actually want to um, create some definition of the color. So we're just um, mixing up some greens here. And you'll see we have this nice kind of brownish green coming through. So we'll build up with a bit of that. And you'll see I'm, I'm doing like a brush stroke in the direction of the grass. Um, and you'll see why we do that now okay and then uh, we can have this kind of yellowy effect here so as we go back we push back the color by going more yellow so in our mix here we're using more lemon yellow and we're just um, going a bit flatter and the flatter would indicate that uh, it's further away because we can't make out all the definition so in the foreground we want to go from a lot of definition in the front to less definition as we push back so I'm just blocking that in right so there we have that blocked in and you can already see forward a little bit back a little bit back a little bit back so the next thing is to get some more ultramarine and then we'll just carry on now with our grass in the foreground here so we're mixing up some ultramarine some lemon yellow some of the red and we want it to be more green so you'll see now that we can start and um, applying some green but it's still a bit tacky here in the front so I think we're going to let that dry and now what I'm going to do is start blocking in that tree 
that we wanted to have there. So the first thing is maybe to look at a tree stump or a tree. So let's have a look and see. So we're going to go here with um, the vermilion and the uh, French ultramarine or the ultramarine and that's going to give us this uh, dark color and we're going to go up so we'll do um, the tree there and now we want to just give it some highlight on the side the light will be coming from the left so we're going to go with that on that side and this is really just um, blocking in so it's by no means the finished effect but I think already um, we can start to see how that's going to look. Okay, so that's kind of how the tree is coming in there. And then what we're going to do is do some branches. So just need to get a slightly finer brush. So here we have a slightly finer brush. And then... So when you're working with uh, really fine and you want to create lines, then just roll the brush as you go. And that just helps to get the ink off, uh, uh, the paint off, should I say, um, completely. And then as you roll, of course, you're exposing the, um, the paint, more paint to the, the paper. And then, of course, it, it also helps you to keep a fine, a fine line. So that's going to be our tree over there. And that just kind of gives us an outline of where we're going to put the branches and stuff. And so we're going to wait for that to dry. And now in the foreground, uh, we need to put in some detail. So we have this nice dark brown that we have on the tree. And mix that with a bit of yellow ochre. And what we're going to do now is we wanted some rocks here in the foreground. So we'll start putting the rocks in. And now you'll see that as we start to uh, put in some detail in the front, you'll see how the picture, the painting, um, starts to come together. And we're going to work with the shapes that have been created already here. So we don't have, um, you know, we've got complete uh, freedom here to create the kind of landscape that we want. And the idea was to have a path coming through. Now the path originally came down here, but I think it'll be more interesting if the path doesn't go straight through, but maybe it it heads off something like this. And then uh, you can't see it for a while. And then the path um, maybe heads off somewhere down there into the into the picture. So let's add some more yellow ochre here. If you're a paint uh, manufacturer, good idea on your tubes. Don't just have the color on one side. Maybe have a strip that runs all the way around the top. That way we don't have to keep turning over the paint as we go. Right, so paint is top of the day done. Paint manufacturer's tip of the day done. And then here you'll see that we'll be adding in some highlight into that path as it winds its way. And that will actually start to, to look quite nice. So, right, we can have the path coming in like that. And now what we can also do is start putting in some of that grass so we're going to go with some yellow ochre and the ultramarine and you'll see now we'll start to add a little bit more detail so a little bit of white you'll see you'll be using a lot of white when you paint and that's because we need to create those highlights and also we don't want our painting to be too dark and at the moment it's pretty dark so we need to uh, lighten it up so that's what we're going to do now we're going to add some some color here 
And now what I'm actually going to do is using this finer brush is actually go with uh, the uh, kind of in the direction of what the grass would would be doing. So uh, that's just going to help create the impression that uh, there is grass here, and we just need to move that up a little bit there, and so you'll see and build that around so now grass is starting to take shape need some brighter yellow there right so now we're going to mix in the slightly brighter yellow and you'll see once again we're keeping it very loose very big and we just keep getting the impression of this uh, grassy grassland in the front here and uh, there you go so right so we're gonna just um, move over here and you know this is mother nature so it's not a curated garden and uh, we're going to just keep that pretty rough and then next to the side of the road we want to uh, create a more highlighted space as the sun comes in from the left and then at the base of those um, pieces of course you, you'd have some dark so we just uh, do a bit here along the bottom maybe that's not exactly the right brush for what I'm doing here right so um, we then change the color a bit so yeah, and you'll see that even though the color here is, is starting to pop, the reason it doesn't pop elsewhere is because the background is lighter. So that's why sometimes if you're going to be working on a space, you want to make the, the background pretty dark. Um, it, it just helps with the highlights of what you're doing. So there we have some grass. And there we have some grass. and right now what we need to do is switch over to a slightly bigger brush because this little brush is going to take too long to achieve what we want to achieve so sometimes when you want to do um, some finer work or, or front work you, you actually might find that a, a a bigger brush does a slightly better job and that's because it allows for um, a looser brush stroke and sometimes you know that's kind of what you need uh, so I'm going to do that and I am warming it up in the front here so we just uh, And we're not painting grass, we just want to create the impression that there is some grass here. So we don't want it to be too curated. We actually want it to be slightly wild. So that's what we're going to do. And then every now and then we want to have um, highlighted areas. and of course um, the terrain changes all the time it's not going to be the same all the way to the background so we also want to mix it up and so you'll see that uh, we are now mixing it up here at the background and that that's helping to create an interesting a more interesting landscape 
as we head further back and also uh, we're creating this flatter space as we uh, push back so right and then over here we'll do the same so you'll see that having that lighter color at the back and a bit flatter we've succeeded now in creating another uh, layer of interesting hills or valleys um, terrain but what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull this one into the space that we're in and that's by just putting some of that color into the foreground here so that the distance is not too far so there you go you can see we have this uh, mass of grass growing here and we didn't actually paint the grass at any stage but um, we've created the impression of 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 that grass okay so also it's the painting is not as dark as it was earlier but you do get the feeling that there is some some grass here and then what we'll do is a bit of this so we're just going to dab it uh, kind of dab it like this and that will you know create the sense that there's a a highlighted space here um, which you know implies it's it's pretty close so that's what we're going to do there and a bit there and a bit there and then something and you'll s yeah and then what we'll do is we'll just uh, push back a little bit further with the white over here and over here so you know we're just creating these uh, interesting points so if, if you look at this picture now you have this um, right so you have this background we have this kind of middle and then in the foreground here you can see that we've started to create this interesting space but we haven't actually really painted that space it just kind of emerges from what we're doing so remember we just want to create the impression we don't actually want to paint it so that's where sometimes you'll find these happy accidents occur um, now what we're going to do is just um, have a look at that path again so there's our, our pathway and uh, you'll see I'm not being too uh, I'm not too worried about how that goes and we'll touch that up again but you kind of get the idea that there's a a pathway that's leading into the bushes here and you'll see I'm just mixing up those colors around it I'm not sticking with to that path in a rigid way and by mixing it up it's actually making for quite an interesting area and now what I'm going to do is just um, and then just some highlights um, in places and we we'll just keep it quite flat um, and also the path won't have the same color everywhere so you know the highlights the colors that you use can be lighter can be darker so I'm just trying to mix up some color here that's a bit different um okay so then we've kind of got the idea of the path and now what we want to do is actually do that tree but now the tree um it's kind of in a good spot there so what i'm going to do is use the ultramarine and i'm going to use um, another yellow so here I've got a medium yellow and I just want to mix it up a bit because of the 
uh, yellow that I've used before and then also I've got some crimson so I'm going to add some crimson now to the mix as well so now we're introducing the crimson in a bigger way it's kind of been used indirectly before and now what we're going to do is mix up that yellow medium yellow with the green and what I'm going to do is just um, as you can see I'm putting in leaves on a tree and um, you know mother nature's quite uh, loose in its application of foliage so I'm going to do the same now I'm using a pretty flat tip brush here a rounder brush might be a bit better and um, remember we're going to have the light from the left so it's a bit darker on this side and then um, Right, so that's looking good and we're going to pick up a little bit of white and we're going to mix that in with the yellow and a bit of the ultramarine and we're going to create um, hopefully a nice yellow. Let's go lighter and you don't want to be uh, mixing or blending, you just want to be dabbing. The moment you start mixing and then you know you kind of lose the effect so we, we're just going to dab a bit and you'll see that the branches that we had now are pretty much all done as we start heading into so on a, on a, on a sunny day the kind of the difference between the highlight and the dark is not that much because there's a lot of ambient light around but when the sun starts setting or it's rising, you'll find that there's not that much ambient light. So one side tends to be a lot darker than the other. So there's a tree. And what we do want to do is a bit more of a highlight. So out comes the white again. And we're going to go pretty light then on the white. So, and we do want a slightly uh, dry brush. And then what we do, uh, we just dab, but we want to go lighter. So almost white, and I'm going to turn the brush because every time I dab, it's going to pick up a color off the canvas. And all right, so there we have our tree and oh, sometimes the highlights are tricky but I think we and because we are dabbing and we're not doing um, specific strokes we get a lot of colors coming through from underneath so you'll see here that this is not a, a, a flat tree we actually have a lot of um, other color coming through from uh, below so that just helps to make it uh, quite an interesting tree and now what I'm gonna do is take some of that take some medium yellow some French ultramarine and a little bit of the crimson um, but not too much and um, don't wanna make it too dark and then we're just gonna do the same here with some dabs And you know there are no lines, so don't try and paint in the lines. Keep it pretty loose. I'm even going into the highlighted section a bit. Right, so there we have our tree. And uh, what we also need to do now on our tree, though, is give that um, sunward side a bit more highlight. We, we need to give it color because it's not going to be um, a white highlight. It'll actually be the color of the tree and at the moment it's too white. So for that I'm really just going to use a little bit of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of yellow ochre 
and a lot more white and then we're just gonna do that and then uh, we'll go slightly darker and now what I can do is just take the crimson and the ultramarine and a bit more ultramarine than crimson and that's going to give us a, a darker brown or slightly purple even and that's okay for the shadow side now if the sun's coming from that side we do know that we need to add some shadow in the grass so going to get rid of the white off the brush swipe that off and then I'm going to uh, work a bit on that shadowy side and a little bit of green but more blue and then we'll just um, and you'll see this brush is lending itself to some nice um, textures the bristles you know are kind of part in there so you know we have this um, idea that the sun is you know that this tree is casting a long shadow and we can also exploit that a bit now so you know, kind of have that effect happening and then using a bit of white and the yellow then uh, we can just break that again with the lighter color on top and that's just because it's in front of it and if we wanted to we could also so if I was to make it very light with um, with some white on these brush strokes that I'm applying now you'll see it'll pull the grass forward and it'll 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 actually push that shadow a little bit further back so there we go we got our shadow all right so we have this nice pathway this tree and what we had originally was a a idea to have a fence to help with the perspective but i don't think that that fence is entirely necessary but what we do want to do is indicate that the pathway does a, 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 a bit of a turn and heads down so the way that we're going to do that then is to darken some of those that foliage as it heads away so we know that on the dark side of that here there would be um, darker grass and then on this side we know that we would be picking up the lighter tips of the lighter grass because of the highlight coming from the left hand side so to push that back you'll see what we'll do is we'll do something like that pretty similar to what we did there except um, that what we need to do now is just get a little bit um, smarter because we do need the illusion that there's a gap there where the path heads in so to do that I'm just going to take yellow ochre and some white and and you'll see I'm, I'm bringing this color all the way to the front and you'll see why and now we also know that if the path was to go into that space so let's do that okay so so we're definitely indicating that the path is turning into that space but we also know, know that it looks a bit odd because it's floating and the reason for that is because we need a bit of shadow on the left hand side and that shadow would probably be caused by the grass so we need to bring some shadow into that path so let's do that do, do, do. and to do that shadow I'm using crimson and ultramarine mixing it up nice and dark and then adding just a touch of of white and some yellow ochre um, but that essentially then is to create this darker brown which then indicates 
um, the pathway. So, okay, and what we're doing here is we we uh, doing that on purpose in the front here. We're going wider on the shadow, and the reason for that then is that we we can be a bit more loose with the road. So now with the road, um, not quite straight strokes, but you know undulating like a path would be and we do want to introduce some dark strokes in there so you know don't be shy do the sometimes nicer to do the dark strokes and then we're just going to touch up a bit with the white and the yellow ochre again I'm not cleaning my brush between strokes I'm actually just letting it all mix in together um, right okay so so there we're creating the impression of this path and I think that's coming on quite nicely and oh, we have some highlights so yeah there's our our path coming in and then um, because it's not a fixed line I'm just going to mash some of that into the side there so there's our pathway and then to highlight that a bit more we take this bigger brush again and now we must just do some highlights here of the grass in the front so to do that I'm using that lemon yellow that we had earlier um, not really even a, just a kiss of the uh, French ultramarine and off we go and what we want to do is just um, and by doing that we create the impression that there's the shadow running through and then of course there on the corner uh, we just introduce some shadow some shadow before those highlights and um, so with a bit of French ultra oh ultramarine not French ultramarine um, I don't know if that would upset the French uh, we just um, been creating some shadow in the grass so it's not uniformly flat and then we introduce a bit of crimson and that introduces uh, another color and so we create these interesting pieces and then we just add a bit more lemon yellow and a bit more white and right so there we have our our path coming in and then it appears to be heading off in that direction uh, oh, just a few dabs there so yeah that creates that illusion of the shadow and then what I'm going to do is just bump up the color of that grass that would have the highlight on it just a little bit and we do want it to be slightly green not completely white right so there you go and a bit of lemon yellow in it Right, so that just creates the idea that the path comes in and does a quick turn around the corner and then heads off that way. So there we have the pathway coming in. We have a rock or something here. We have some uh, grass or something here. And then we have that heading off and somewhere disappearing in. And then, of course, we have this beautiful landscape in the background. So what I'm going to do now is just... Um, and just make uh, 
some more uh, interesting colors and you'll see that I'm just I'm not uh, really doing any particular shape I'm just having some fun and we're just uh, creating this like interesting landscape behind and then there we have this massive um, mountain or whatever it is in the background there and um, we can just break some of those lines because the lines may be too much and we can also create some interesting areas here and maybe uh, some red in the closer areas maybe there's um, something happening okay and we want to get rid of that little um, white spot there and then here we have uh, and you'll see that as you go you you know you can make some more interesting spaces um, as you want and then you know white's a great color for flattening um, area so I'm just added a bit of white now and you can see how I'm quite quickly able then to flatten that color and at the same time you know give it a bit of a highlight so it's almost like um, acting against each other so there we have our, our little landscape um, and this is really just a little sketch so if you wanted to take it further you could um, one little thing that we could do and I'm not saying we should but I'm going to do it anyway and you know you could have these little uh, points of interest here and it's like well is it um, trees or isn't it trees um, on the landscape so you might have seen that um, when you travel that you see these little pockets on the horizon and it's like well what is it and what we can do is introduce some of that here what it'll also do and you'll notice that now is if we do introduce that it'll it'll also serve to bump up the highlight value here so if I do it there you'll see that that highlight actually looks brighter so sometimes to highlight something you need to change the background of the item um, next to it and then that um, creates a more interesting space so there we have something happening there something happening there and right now we're just having fun and experimenting we're not um, doing anything specific and you know that just looks like there's um, some interesting terrain and it's still close enough to discern so that um, brings it into the focus so there you go there we have like some interesting uh, stuff happening and then of course when you start going down that rabbit hole then you feel the need to add more white and this is where you just need to decide if you've actually um, gone far enough or if you really want to go down and spend a lot of time uh, creating these areas of interest so that's entirely up to you I think I'm just about done on this particular color sketch so I'm not going to do too much more I did want to create some highlights there maybe something there and you'll see we're not actually painting um, anything we're just creating um, 
areas of interest to make our landscape um, a little bit more interesting and so quite easy to do and remember you know if you're using wash you can paint over if you don't like something that you've done so yeah there we just um, creating uh, some kind of interest in our landscape so I think you get the idea of how you can build it up and as we go in a bit darker there it also serves to push the landscape here um, a lot closer so that's our path with the tree some clouds in the sky I didn't do too much on the sky but uh, you get the idea of the little bit of building up um, it would be possible then to to do a bit more there um, and the more I look at this picture then I kind of want to do more so I think what I'm going to do now is stop and uh, leave it as it is and it's really just an exercise in getting some foreground going having the foreground move away having a, a featured item in the front going back and then having these extended um, areas at the back just one little trick I can show you if we wanted to show some sun just kissing those um, mountains in the purple at the back you could take some yellow ochre and a bit of white and just um, by doing that very gently no particular then it shows how the sun is uh, just having an influence on that big uh, rock in the background so yellow ochre is, is a great color for doing that and that's just showing how the sun is kissing the side of that mountain and then of course you start going down that rabbit hole and then you want to make that a bit lighter and it's your painting so head off down the rabbit hole what you can also do if you're brave enough is is to in introduce some of that yellow ochre uh, into your sky and sometimes that's also a nice way of just showing a hint of sun and maybe because we have the mountain at the bottom having that a little bit in the clouds um, and you'll see I'm not following any particular formula there but you can see how that then also um, changes the sky and we're introducing a bit of white and you'll see my, my brush is still got that yellow ochre on and I'm just dry brushing with a bit of the white and of course um, clouds can be smooth they can be rough they, they can pretty much be whatever mother nature wants them to be but uh, yeah I'm gonna stop here now because I could carry on for a long time on this painting now starting to really enjoy it but there you could have your um, clouds then also affected by the sun's rays and that starts to give it more of a, a sunset kind of feel so that's pretty much it for this uh, particular exercise so I hope you enjoyed that video and thank you for watching